Hey guys, welcome back. I got an awesome video for you guys today. This is part two of a two-part series breaking down the biggest lake in New York. Uh, I got the link for part one right there in the description of the video. I also have a link in the description of the video for the giveaway that I'm doing at 100 subs. So check that out also. Um, it's my birthday, um, part one. You can see me go out and figure these fish out or put the pattern together. Part two, it's the very next day. It's my birthday. I have this pattern already put together, but I'm expanding on it now. And uh, I'm out there putting a nice fat birthday bag together. Also, don't miss it. I do a whole pattern breakdown, giving you guys a first-hand look inside my graphs, explaining the method to my whole approach with my sonar and all my electronics. Um, and how I coordinated myself to find these fish. So uh, anyway, enough with the talking. Let's get right to the footage. Enjoy it, guys. There he is. It's like a really mature rock bass. I was saying, why isn't this thing fighting like a freaking small one? Looks like something took its chunk out of his tail, too. <laughs> Bite's gonna be a little different, maybe. There he is. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, dude! No. Uh. I am way too used to freaking flipping largemouth on thick line. Or I'm just used to boat flipping fish, period. All right, he's gotta come. Come on, buddy. I just don't wanna, I know, I got a light wire hook on here. And this is how it's gonna have to be. It's gonna have to really play these fish today. Okay, he knows he's hooked, that's for sure. All right, bud, you're coming. Come on, you're ready. Come on, you're ready. Not a small fish. We might want to fish with a net. Nah, screw that. Ooh, boy. That's the ones we're looking for. <laughs> yes. Gotta pay attention to that hookup ratio today. I really, really gotta see what's good with changing up the drop shot setup a little bit. Birthday fish. There he is. Oh my god, never mind. What's the deal with these rock bass? Why are they so gigantic, dude? a mature dude right there it's a very challenging type of pattern you have to you really have to work very hard with your electronics and and um you have to stay focused to and you have to try to stay confident too in between bites because once you come up on what you need you, you can catch two or three fish in the same hole like that there he is oh perfect oh man i got a spot lock there might be another one there this is a bass. Woo! He's about to come up. Yo! I think he just realized he was freaking hooked. Is he gonna go easy? Are you gonna come easy, bro? You can never tell in this lake. They're like freaking the two pounders fight like fives. And I don't wanna break any fish off. So you just gotta play these fish, you know? Light line, light tackle. That's the right way to do it. This way you don't pull that little light wire hook out of their mouth. And the thing is, too, I think they just realize that they're hooked a lot of the times, too. Once you get them up to the boat and they're like, nope, see you later. Like a freaking tuna in salt water. That's what a, a small mouth is. It's the equivalent to a tuna. This is not a small fish either. It's not a giant giant, but I don't really know how much for I'll take them. Definitely take him. He's over two for sure. Probably over two and a half, yeah. 
and that hook it had him pretty good no complaints on that one there he is oh he fell off that wasn't a big fish though I don't know Oh, that is a walleye? Yeah, it's a walleye. Yeah. And that's what the locals fish for here. I'm gonna fish that spot on the other side of this island. There's a the fish I was looking for over here. Oh my God, did I work for you, buddy. And that's how this pattern is going to be. And it's even more difficult with this overcast conditions. So you better just keep getting better at it as you go. That's what you got to do. And if you don't, you get left behind because the conditions keep changing. I, just, just be a three pounder, all right? I need a solid at least 15 pounds out here for my birthday. He looks like he's got the potential to be a three. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if this doesn't get you excited, then you have problems, you know what I mean? <sighs> you gotta love it. Oh yeah, he's not really small, man. He's not small. Come on, buddy. <sighs> you look good, bro. Oh, nice fish. Yeah, he's a solid 310. Nice. I need five of you. Nice fish. There's the sun. And there's the fish. Yes! Good timing. Oh! Yes! Oh my god, dude. They got this current now to, they got this wind current. It gives them even more muscles. Yeah, that's a two. Two seven one. Okay. That's good. That's good. There should be one right there. Okay, it works. All right, buddy. We're not gonna waste time with you. Let's go. Ooh, just barely got him in. Not a small fish. Oh, there he is. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. I could stay here all day and catch a bay. It's just that I have way too much lake to cover to be sitting in one spot all day. If I had to fish a tournament tomorrow here, though. Whoa, I'm coming.
coming back to this spot. <laughs> oh, shit. That's the one I needed. Oh, I got more areas. I got some more places to look around here, too. Ooh, that is not a little one. <laughs> yes. Got them hooked good, too, man. Got them hooked really good. Freaking fat fish. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. The slaunches are up in the base, like on the... That little bit of wind and that current, and that wind current in the water for leverage. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Things hook perfectly. Alright guys, real quick, in part one I talked about a key adjustment I made with the length of my drop shot leader, making the bottom of my drop shot leader under my hook um, extra long, which accommodated a better hookup ratio as I was experimenting, trial and error building this pattern. Just to expand on that, as you can see in part one, I did still drop a good amount of fish um, and I went home and I tried to really figure out, or back to the hotel, and tried to figure out what I did wrong or how I can put it together. Um, the next day I went back with a new approach and I used a lighter wire hook. I was using the Hayabusa 132 finesse hook. Um, that hook was super light wire, it's very strong, and it gives you a good um, penetration into the fish's mouth, even when they're biting very finicky. Not only did it do that, but it offered me a low profile presentation that the fish didn't really see so um, that was worth a mention that was one key adjustment that um, helped to increasing my hookup ratio huge in part two oh my god enough is enough already you know how hard I had to work for that fish god <laughs> I knew he was here. Not gonna tell me they're not. Their temperament starts to change sometimes. Jeez. All right, get in the boat. And stop being so dramatic. We gotta go catch a five pounder. Come on, let's go. Oh yeah, that's fun. Let's do it, bro. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. Come in. All right, bigger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I had to talk a little bit of smack to that fish. Oof. He ate it good too. Nice fish. Solid two and a half, two five five. Doesn't help my bag, but a lot of fun. All right, basically, so this is what's happening. I have um, one spot right now that is slamming and I'm catching like a three pound smallie average over there, which I only have like an hour and a half left on the water. It's my birthday. I want to get off and um, enjoy the rest of my day, uh, which I'm definitely doing right now as well. But I want to expand my horizons. So that means that I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to go out and look to expand the pattern that I had already built. Um, go cover some more water, do some graphing, and I know I only have an hour left or an hour and a half left, but 
Um, I'm really looking for a five pounder right now. Um, I'm looking for a six pounder. I'm looking for something big. I'm looking for a big kicker and I need to find, I need to take a chance to try to find that fish. So I'm leaving an area that definitely has fish to go hopefully find a bigger fish. to a largemouth actually the first largemouth I've even um I've even caught since I've started really smally fishing so um that really tells me that I might be in the wrong area so I might have to pick up and move the boat I'm gonna fish up to this point behind me um and try to find some uh ideal looking structure that I need but other than that I think I'm gonna run it out of here Never mind. <laughs> Babe. Yes, that's what I want to see. Freaking awesome. I wish he was. All right, so I never found the kicker I was looking for, but after connecting the dots to multiple active areas and inactive areas as well, I could confidently say that um, even in the most productive areas where I was doing my best, uh, I still didn't catch any fish over five pounds. So um, in retrospect, I'm not disappointed with my decision to go out and look. I'm not disappointed to abandon my areas. Um, I sure as hell didn't abandon my pattern. Um, I was just taking a risk to expand on it. And that's exactly what you have to do um, commonly in most tournament situations uh, in order to win, especially. So um, I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, really awesome putting this out to you guys. Anyway, check out this breakdown that I do. This is sick. I'm going to take you inside my graphs. Check it out. All right, guys, real quick, I am out here and I want to just take a second to show you how intricate this pattern actually was laid out this week. Um, it wasn't just a simple thing or where I can go shoot smallies on anywhere off of beds. Uh, it was really difficult to find the active bedding areas. But once I did, you know, then I can pick them apart with my 360. So I just wanted to give you a look at my electronics and how I was able to catch fish. Not really a lot of beds around anywhere other than where I find this contour squeeze right here in the corner. So finding those valuable areas on the map is so important. And once I do, it's about finding the depth range. So now I'm in four feet and I'm targeting six to eight feet of water. So over the lines of this map right here are gonna be a depth change. It's gonna get a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna be casting off into eight to 10 feet of water. And as you can see on my 360, it's displaying darkness right here 
and that means that there's going to be a drop off and there's going to be also extra structure that has a different density it's not going to be as hard it's going to be softer bottom right in that area so it's a combination of the depth um the, the depth range for sure which is six to eight feet for me and the contour map is so vital and then if i could find the right contour squeezes and i can um find the right depth range i just have to find the juice i'm looking for on the 360. if i can make all that match up then that's where i'm gonna want to believe i'm gonna get a bite but then the whole loop of it is is that some beds are just completely not active so you have to find areas that are actually active build waypoints and that's what i'm doing out here working with those maps man the map and the 360 and the sonar i mean everything together is like freaking loop there we go <laughs> beautiful finish man freaking hayabusa hook just gets him every time <laughs> i don't gotta worry about that Thing out. <laughs>